Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil Markets. Paris Rapeseed. Since mid-June until October, the market had been trapped between two congestion bands, one below between 4.38 to 4.45 and three quarters, and another above between 5.13 and three quarters to 5.19 and a half. During this incarceration, the market constructed a head and shoulders pattern, which still looks a lot like a head and shoulders top right now, as well as an extension to its second shoulder from mid-August until the start of October. I've highlighted the neckline for this head and shoulders top in dark blue on my daily chart. That's currently at 4.56 and three quarters. The problem the market suffered during this time had been the sheer amount of force necessary to push down through this head and shoulders top neckline and try and fulfill targets below. Now what I mean by this is that we not only have the neckline to try and push down through, but nearby below was the previously mentioned congestion band between 4.38 to 4.45 and three quarters containing the March, April and June 2013 highs at 4.42 and a quarter, 4.42 and 4.38, respectively. It looked as if prices had finally managed to break lower in early October, but the market turned back up and into the congestion and then fell away again, rolled up and fell away, such that right now prices are sitting within the 4.38 to 4.45 and three quarter band yet again. This not only moved the market away from a break lower into possible false break to a lower territory, but also created a small reverse head and shoulders pattern over October and early November, with the neckline based on the very same neckline of the larger June to October head and shoulders top, the so far unsuccessful head and shoulders pattern. In the meantime, there have been some key bearish pressures that prices will have to deal with ones which I detailed four weeks ago, and I quote again. We have overhead a more diaphanous congestion band between 456 and three quarters to 468 and three quarters. A band that was relatively easier to navigate than the others mentioned, but which now has three key potentially bearish pressures within it. At a declining short medium moving average, currently at 444 and a half, then the flatlining median moving average currently at 4.56 and a quarter, and a declining long moving average currently at 4.55 even. At least two out of these three are descending to impact the market, and one should not take away anything from them, especially any efforts to pressure the market from above. End of quote. The short medium moving average is now down in amongst the previously mentioned 4.38 to 4.45 and three quarter congestion band and the medium and long moving averages are emerging below the diaphanous 456 and three quarters to 468 and three quarters congestion band. However, none of these three bearish pressures have really made an impact on the current market. So we wait. In the meantime, I'll repeat some potential targets below, which I laid out six weeks ago for the head and shoulders top pattern. Hence, Primary target X would be in the 400 even zone, with a secondary hard to reach target X1 in the 354 even zone. Now, any such move lower would be very, very interesting, as we have alternate neckline one, currently at 401 and a half, and alternate neckline two, currently at 404 and three quarters, both back from the old October 2019 to February 2020, head and shoulders top in the way. They are highlighted in bright red and green, respectively. Plus, there is the December 2020 lower at 396 and three quarters, all of which are in the way to any move lower. And I would note that these three supports stopped the fall of this market back in May this year. Winnipeg Canola. The recent key pa patterns here had been the July to September double top, which we've seen play out to both primary and secondary targets. Then below that, the neckline, specifically the neckline of the early uh, mid-April to early July reverse head and shoulders bottom, which is highlighted in purple on my daily chart, and that's currently at 691.60. Then, what I consider to be one of the more important patterns here, the broken bearish Andrews pitchfork created by the earlier double top, 
of the mid-July to late August move, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. On this last pattern, the market broke up and out on the top side of this pitchfork, but failed over the last three weeks to push up through the green colored short medium moving average, currently at 7.06, a significant failure. Finally, there is a combination of the October to November reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern. There's a mouthful to say, reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern that also can be seen as an ascending triangle which admittedly is not the best looking version of this pattern, but it nevertheless is still out there. And that's highlighted in dark blue trend lines with the neckline of the reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern, currently 731.10, acting as the flat topside trend line and the late October uh, uptrend, currently at 708.20, acting as the rising trend line. The failure at the testing of the short medium moving average led to last Friday's drop and break out below the ascending triangle, down through the purple neckline and even back below the upper time. Currently, uh, well, yesterday was at 664.10. And that's of the bright red bearish Andrews pitchfork. Now my concern with this move is this move lower could be a precursor for a move down in the other oil seeds and veg oils in that the market has seemingly chosen to try and form a bearish half hesitation over November with potential all the way down to even the 580 even zone. This is not a done deal. It's not a done deal as I have not placed any targets below, but it is worth considering. In the meantime, let's take a look at the break below the descending triangle, see what and where this leads us. Thus, a primary target was in the 676 zone with a secondary harder to reach target X in the 642 zone. In less than a week after the break lower, the market has reached the primary target and is now, well, it's now not that far away from the secondary target at 642. It's time now to see if the secondary target becomes a reality. At the moment, apart from the broken upper tie, the only support that stands in the way is the, which is the June 2021 low at 656, though I am increasingly more interested to know if this contract is really an indicator of what the other oil seas and veg oils may be having to deal with. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. I have said this so many times, but and but I'll keep saying it until it is no longer true. But the or mid-August to early November 2022, that's right, August to November 2022, over a year old, mildly bearish shift pitchfork, the one highlighted in dark red on my daily chart, is still running the show here after so much time. This mildly bearish pitchfork guided prices more or less lower. Initially in between the upper time currently at 4024 and the middle time currently at 3391. Then for a while in May and June between the middle time and the lower time, lower times are currently at 2759, before prices moved back up again in between the middle and upper times. The significant patterns within this bearish pitchfork have been the June to September diamond pattern and the recent late June, late July to late August bearish shift pitchfork highlighted in bright green on my daily chart. In mid-November, prices broke up through the upper time of this pattern. That's currently at 35.92. As well as a combination of the declining short medium moving average, currently 37.34. The July to date downtrend, currently 36.09, which is highlighted in bright red on my daily chart. The short medium moving average, currently 37.34. And the recent 50% Fibonacci line at 37.06. There's a lot to digest there. Please feel free to rewind and play again. The rise continued over the medium moving average, currently at 37.79, and the long moving average, currently 37.93, breaking the capping action seen there back in mid-October, then up over the purple neckline, currently at 38.86, of the recent reverse head and shoulders pattern, before finally running out of steam on the upside at the February 2011 high at 39.53, and the further congestion at 39.86. Three weeks and two weeks ago as well, the market made a seeming lopsided horn top and dropped down through all the resistances that became supports and are back now as resistances. 
The drop has been enough that price has reached down to the broken upper tine, which is why I have kept the bright, broken, bright green bearish shift pitchfork and the broken bright red downtrend still on my daily chart, despite their being clearly due for retirement. So what now? Well, I am curious as to whether this market will ski down the top of the combination of the broken downtrend and the upper tine. Additionally, I suspect if it is not key, then it would still be significant. The 50% Fibonacci line at 3706. I'm going to pay close attention to these two over the next week or two because I can and I want to. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.